U.S. neoconservatives. The neoconservatives are the group that took over U.S. foreign policy 30 years ago at the end of the Soviet Union. This neoconservative group said, oh, okay, our rival is gone. We now are the sole superpower. We run the world. We are the hegemon, to use the term that the international relations uh, types use. Yeah. Uh, or uh, as the military in the U.S. says, uh, we have full spectrum dominance. Now, the idea was 30 years ago already, we can basically do what we want. And they have tried in Iraq. They have tried. in Syria, they have tried in Libya, they have tried in Afghanistan. And what they've tried to do is to say the U.S. runs the show. It, it fails all the time. When it comes to this war in Ukraine, this has been brewing for three decades as well, because the term of Gorbachev ending the Soviet Warsaw Pact military alliance was that NATO would not take advantage of that, mm -hmm. but would also stay where it was. The phrase that was used to Gorbachev was, NATO will not move one inch to the east. Of course, as soon as the Soviet Union ended, the United States neocon said, we can do what we want. We don't have to honor any agreement. And they started NATO enlargement. First to Central Europe, probably acceptable and understandable, though a lie. I, I wouldn't have done it. <clears throat> but to Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic, these were countries that had been dominated by the Soviet Union. They're not close to Russia. <clears throat> they weren't any direct threat to Russia to have them as part of NATO. But then starting in the 2000s with George W. Bush Jr., who really was the neocon administration par excellence with Cheney, as his vice president, the one who made the Iraq war, for example, they enlarged NATO to seven more countries, Romania, Bulgaria, Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia, Slovakia, and Slovenia. Now, that's coming pretty close to Russia. And Russia kept saying, don't do this. It's provocative. You told us you never would. You're getting to our borders. You're threatening our security. And then in 2008, uh, George Bush actually did the horror, though privately, of the Europeans, said, we're going to expand NATO to Ukraine and to Georgia. Now, if you look at a map, and I hope your uh, listeners do look at a map, if the NATO alliance expanded to Georgia and Ukraine, the idea was and would be to encircle Russia in the Black Sea, because you'd have NATO in Ukraine, Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey, and Georgia. You'd actually encircle the Russian naval fleet. And as U.S. neocon strategists said, that would end Russia as any kind of even regional power. It mm. couldn't project any kind of power, even naval, uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean. That was the idea. The Russians were beside themselves. And Putin said in the 2008 Bucharest NATO summit to Bush, to his face, if you do this, we will take Crimea because that is for us core security. Americans are incredibly arrogant. <laughs> at, at the, this governmental level. They believe they don't have to listen to anybody. But, you know, there was a breathing space in 2010 because a pro-Russian president was elected in Ukraine, Viktor Yanukovych. Yeah. And he said, we should be neutral. <laughs> we don't want to be caught in a trap between the United States and Russia. We will be neutral. Yeah. But that's not good enough for America. You're either with us or you're against us. So the United States worked pretty hard to overthrow Yanukovych in the so-called Maidan uh, in, in 
late 2013 and early 2014. I want to talk to you about what happened in 2014, but I just want to go back to the early 90s, the collapse of the Soviet Union and the promises made to Gorbachev, uh, namely, if the Warsaw Pact is dissolved, NATO will not move an inch towards the east. That was the promise that was made. A lot of people are disputing that. My question to you is, is there a, a paper trail or documentary proof of this, this agreement, or at least this verbal promise? It's, it's, it's thoroughly documented. People can go on uh, something called nsarchive.gwu.edu. GWU is George Washington University, and it's the National Security Archive, or nsarchive.gwu.edu. And the uh, title of the folder is NATO Expansion, What Gorbachev Heard. It was a very extensive amount of diplomacy that was used by Hans Dietrich Genscher, Chancellor Helmut Kohl, James Baker III, the US Secretary of State, to convince Gorbachev to go along with German reunification. It was not casual, it was detailed, it was briefed in detail, it's all documented, it's not an issue. Remember, in statecraft, countries lie. The United States lies for a living. And people could say, yeah, well, what's new? Well, they're lying about this one too. It's mm -hmm. convenient to say these promises weren't given and they say it. And they get away with most things because a powerful government dominates the media. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is it was explicit. And Gorbachev was very explicit. And that is, yes, we can go forward, but it would not be acceptable for NATO to expand eastward. Yeah. Then Yeltsin picked this up, I know, when he became president. And he said repeatedly to Clinton, don't do this. And then the U.S. government line is, well, Yeltsin accepted it. What does it mean accepted? What, what he what he quote accepted is that Clinton said it's going to happen whether you want it to happen or not. That's what he accepted. He didn't say, oh, that's fine. I understand your point of view. He was given a fait accompli. And then when Putin became president at the end of the 1990s, he specifically vociferously objected. And in a famous speech that he gave at the Munich Security Conference in 2007, he explained, do not do this. Yeah. Do yeah. not come closer. And in 2008, very interestingly, at the Bucharest summit, European leaders said to me personally how bad an idea this is. But, you know, when you have a dominant power like the United States, these leaders don't speak publicly. Yeah. They do not talk against the United States. They fear they will get punished one way or another. Yeah. One European leader said they treat us like children, told me personally. Yeah. In a, I hear a lot. I see a lot. I, I know these people personally. I'm just not happy with the U.S. dominating the narrative when it is so dangerous yeah. 